Hello, welcome back to the animation course. So we've completed our landing pad animation setup. We have our skeleton in place and all of our controls. If we uh, select this, we can open up our doors and we can bring our mechanical arms out like so. Close these doors back up. So now I think we're ready to start actually planning our scene. So let's go ahead and go to File, Import, and you can import your spaceship that has been already rigged with animation and controls. I'm going to import mine. So here I have this one. So I have my spaceship skeleton. Everything's all rigged together. And I have my controls, cockpit open, and so on. My flaps, the wings, everything works. Guns shooting. So we can hide the skeleton if we wish, since we're going to be mainly using our handles and controls. So we can go to show and uncheck joints, so then the skeletons are no longer uh, visible. We can s use our selection handle here to grab our spaceship like this, and the controls for the spaceship's parts are right here next to it and it is parented to the ship so whenever the ship's flying around the controls are flying right there next to it and then the controls for the landing pad are right here that we can use and are within easy reach so let's plan our scene out, let's zoom out some and how do we want this to work? I think what we're going to try and do is have the spaceship kind of fly in do some shooting at something and we can and you can create your own targets like little target circles like target practice or if you want to make an asteroid or something you can have as a target whatever you want to do I'm just going to probably use something simple just for the sake of demonstration like a sphere or something as a something for the space to shoot at and then so we're gonna have it come rolling in shoot at some targets come in for a landing and you could have it circle the landing pad if you wish and have it come in at like a spiraling motion and as it comes in the landing gear on attached to the landing pad will come into action and catch the ship as uh, it's programmed to do. So one thing we could do to make animating the spaceship's path a little bit easier is to use a motion path. So I'm going to go to create CV curve tool. And let's just draw the path we wish our spaceship to take. I'm going to go to the top view and we're going to use our landing pad as kind of the starting point because we know we're going to end at the landing pad. So I'm just going to start drawing my curve. And I'm just thinking the ship's going to come in spiraling around like this. And while it's over here, it will be doing its gun firing and just have it come in from my way over here and hit enter to finish my curve. So now I can grab the CV on the end of the curve you can adjust the verticality of it so we can I can move this up and you can use the arrow keys to kind of scroll between CV points so it's not just coming in a, a, on a flat trajectory maybe over here and we can also use what's uh, soft modification you press the B key it kind of turns it on hold down B and left click and drag and you have this fall off radius like so and I'll just kind of pull when I pull it down like this it kind of pulls several of them down press B again to turn it off So, you know, something like this. And you can obviously make whatever shape you'd like. So the ship will be attached to this motion path or come flying in, spiral around, and come in for a landing like this. And again, if you wish to adjust these points as much as you wish, that's fine to get the uh, motion you're looking for. So before we attach the ship to the curve, because we I started the curve at the landing gear and worked my way out, the curve direction starts at the landing gear and flows out 
the same way that we created the curve. And so whenever I attach the spaceship to the curve to use it as a motion path, it will assume the beginning of it will be down here at the landing pad. So I need to actually reverse the curve's direction to make sure that it knows that the curve starts way out here in space. And that's where the ship should start on the curve. So I'll select the curve. I go to the Edit Curves menu and choose Reverse Curve Direction. So just by clicking it, nothing visible will change, but it will reverse the direction of the curve so that the spaceship, when it's attached to the curve, will start out here. So, we're going to go ahead and try attaching the ship to the curve. We can grab our little selection handle here to select the root joint of the skeleton. Hold shift and select my curve. Then we can go to the animation menu, animate, motion paths, attach to motion path, and let's go into the options. So here in the options, it gives you a time range, and by default it says the time slider, which means the visible time slider that we have here, which is from frame 1 to 24, which we don't want to use that. So if we get 30 frames equals 1 second, so how long should it take for the ship to fly through this entire motion path? And you can just guesstimate, you can change it later. But let's assume that it's going to start at frame 1, and it's going to take at least at least three or four seconds I would think to get from one point all the way to the end. It might, that might actually be too fast. But even if it is a little fast, it's something that we can change later. So let's say for four seconds, 30 frames per second, that would be 120 frames. So 120. And we'll want the, the ship to follow the path. And these other things we can change in a minute. Let's just stick with this. Start time and end time is frame one to frame 120 with follow check and click attach. So now if I press the F key to zoom in on my spaceship you'll see it's now been attached to the curve. I want to hit play and actually we only have 24 frames visible here so let's adjust our time slider to show all the frames we want to see. You'll see I'm using 24 frames per second again because I opened my landing pad scene which was not set to 30 frames per second. So I'm going to go to the settings uh, category, change the time to NTSC. Go back to time slider. Set it to play real time, 30 frames per second. And this end over here, since we know that we put in 120 frames for the end of our animation, let's give it a little bit of a buffer and say 200 frames. And hit save. So now let's play the animation just to kind of see how it looks. Obviously, it's flying way out there and coming in for it. All right, so you can observe this uh, however much you want. I'm only going to select my landing pad and zoom in down here, and then I'll watch the ship as it comes in. So it comes in at a really quickly toward the end of the animation, but we can again, like I said, adjust that when it comes down to it. But overall, though, when it comes to a plan, anyway, this looks like a good plan for the spaceship's path. So I'm going to stop the animation and hit rewind. So you'll notice when we attached it we had these numbers appear and this one's set to 1.25 which is because I changed it to 30 frames per second after applying it to the curve. That's not a big deal. So if I select my curve and go into the attributes you see I have motion path here. So we can look at our settings and luckily enough the spaceship does appear to be facing the right way following the curvature of the path given to it. If yours is facing backwards or something, you might need to change your front axis or up axis. You can kind of play with these values. If I change this, for example, to Z, you'll see now my ship is facing to the side, or Y is facing the other side, or X, now it's facing forward. So this depends on uh, just how your scene is oriented. You may need to adjust this front axis or up axis to make it point the right way. But mine's going the right way, which is good. So now let's, before we go too far, let's create our camera that we're going to be looking through for our scene. And it's going to be focusing on the ship. So let's go to create cameras. I'll just create a standard camera here. And the camera is created in the scene. I'm zoomed in on it. 
So to look through my camera, I can go to panels, look through selected camera. So now I'm looking through our new camera. Let's go back to the start of the animation at frame one. So I know the ship is way up there. I'm going to select it, press F to zoom in on it. So now I'm focused on the ship. So what I can do is I can constrain my camera to look at the ship. To aim the camera at the ship, we can select the ship itself first by selecting the handle for the root joint. Hold down shift and select the camera. Then go to constrain, aim, and in the options we can go to edit reset settings make sure we're using our default settings and click add. So right away you'll notice my camera is not aimed at the spaceship, it's actually aimed off to the side. That's just the way it's set by default. We can hit Control A to open the attribute editor, go into the camera aim constraint, and we see down here we have our aim constraint attributes. And the aim vector is x, y, z, and x right now is 1. Let's try a different value, let's say negative 1 for x, no, it goes the other way, actually negative 1 for z. So with the negative 1 z aim vector, instead of the positive 1 x aim vector, we're now looking at the ship. So if I were to select my ship's handle now and move the ship around, the camera is aimed right at it. So as I play, scrub through the animation a little bit here, you see how the camera aims at the ship as it drives away. So you can select the camera, hold shift, select the root joint and press P to parent. And you see now the camera follows the ship and continues to remain aimed at it as it goes along. So we can adjust our camera's position according to related to the ship's position. So we go to panels, look through selected camera again. I can scrub through the animation here. So then this is just one camera angle of the animation where we might want to do a couple different camera cuts for our scene. So have one animation showing the ship as it flies in or even have this camera be kind of a track camera that we can render for the whole scene and then have a couple other cameras that are stationary looking at the ship as it flies by or as it, and as it comes in for a landing and so on. So we have a few different cameras in our scene uh, and rendering different segments of the scene to get our completed scene. This will be our spaceship track camera. Let's go back to our perspective view. So another thing we can do with our motion path, I select my root joint, control A to go into the attributes. You see on the motion path tab, we scroll down we have the bank checkbox. We check this bank tab and then as the ship gets to, kind of zoom in on here, curves. Now right now the effect's kind of subtle. But right here in this tight curve in the middle of this spiraling motion, if we increase our bank scale, you can see how the ship reacts. Let's increase it to like 25. So as it comes in here, it's kind of banking to the right. We even increase it maybe to 50, like so. as it flies in here with this tight spiral, it banks hard like this. And then as it comes in for its landing, we'll need to have it straightened up. So the bank scale attribute of the motion path will need to be animated to increase and decrease the scale as we need it. So we want it to be high at this point of the animation and then down to zero at this point. So right through here we can right click on bank scale and say set a key. So at frame 150 change the bank scale to 1 right click on bank scale and say set key. So that way as it comes in it banks hard to the right and then the bank goes away and it comes in at a good straight angle. So one thing we're also going to need to do is have the ship kind of slow down as it gets to the end of the motion path. So currently it just kind of flies straight in and just abruptly stops. And we're going to want it to come in and slow 
down as it gets to its stopping position. So let's select our spaceship. We can grab our handle for our root joint. We can hit Control-A to actually close the attribute editor if it's open. And let's open the graph editor again. Let's go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. So now this is the graph editor for our spaceship as it is right now. You see there's lots of stuff in here. And we have motion path, U value for all of our translate and rotation channels as well as the bank scale values for each of our channels. So bank scale you'll see these these two keys that we made toward the end of the animation to have that bank happen and then kind of turn off as it comes in for a landing. That's what these two keys are here. What we're really interested in is the motion path U value for all of these channels. So we'll hold down control key and click each one to have them all highlighted and they're all of course on top of each other. Press F to kind of frame them so we see that what we have here is 0 to 1 which is the U value of the curve. So whenever you're dealing with the cur a point on that curve the beginning of the curve is at 0 and the end of the curve is at 1. So the, cur the ship is traveling along the curve from the 0 position on the curve at the beginning all the way to the 1 position of the curve at the end of the 150 frames. If we adjust the flow of the curve here in the graph editor, we can adjust how fast the ship travels along the curve. So let's select this handle, press W for the move tool, middle mouse click and drag, you can see how I can kind of bend this curve like this. So we'll have it kind of have an arc like so. I can grab this one and do kind of this. So we, we don't want it to flare up like that but we can have it do like this so it kind of plateaus as it gets toward the end of the motion. So something like this. And let's minimize this and play the animation and see how fast the ship moves now. So I'll rewind and play. Comes in and slows down. We may need to adjust that curve a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. So it kind of slows down and speeds up slightly toward the end. So we don't want that to happen. Let's go back to the graph editor. So we can kind of zoom in a little bit and see what's going on. We can kind of make sure that if we grab this whole key and choose this straight line option, it kind of flattens this these handles. I don't want to zoom out too much. And then we can grab this one. Maybe bring the flare down slightly so it's not quite so high, the curvature. And now let's kind of play it and see how it reacts. We're mostly interested in how it comes in as a, at a landing. There we go, that was a bit more smooth. Flies in and slows down and stops. Now the bank motion, because we changed how fast the ship is coming in, the animation we did for the banking has changed too. So let's stop it right here or so. So we know the bank needs to be around this high at this point in the animation. Let's go back to our graph editor. And now we can look at our bank scale channels. Press the F key. So we are at frame 115 in our timeline whenever the scale of the bank needs to be high. And this key here for whenever the bank is high is at key 146. So we can move this over to 115, or we can even type it in 115 like that. So at frame 115 now, it then starts to, the bank value starts to animate down to 1. So now let's hit play. And now that banking isn't quite so drastic at the end of the animation because we adjusted it. We adjusted how fast the bank value changes. Like so. Okay, so I think we are getting our scene put together. There's a lot of components to uh, setting up a scene and framing everything. So we have the, our track camera here looking at our spaceship, but I think we're going to hold off on any more cameras until our scene is pretty much done and then we can set up our stationary cameras around the scene to catch the action the way that we want to. So thanks for sticking with us so far that we're coming to the end of our series on this animation course. 
we're getting our scene put together and I hope you are having fun and are enjoying the process. I'll see you next time.